So the first step of this process is to cast on using waste yarn. The specific reason for using waste yarn in this project is so that you can easily identify the first row of stitches of your main yarn. The reason you need to be able to identify them really easily is because after you've done a certain number of rows, you're then going to need to put those back on the needle together with the current row of knitting. That's going to happen at about row 40. Now you could do this without using waste yarn, but using the waste yarn is going to make it much easier to identify that first row of stitches that you need to pick up and put back onto the needles. That's the reason why we're using waste yarn in this particular case. I also usually like to use waste yarn simply because the first row when you're casting on like this can be a bit uneven. You know, you're just putting the yarn on there with your hand, it's not going through the tensioner at all, and so it can be pretty uneven. Some stitches looser than others, so they end up, that first row can often end up being a bit wonky. Some stitches bigger than other ones, and if you use a provisional cast on, which is what casting on with waste yarn is, then that wonkiness is in the waste yarn and by the time you've done five, five rows or however many rows of waste yarn you do and then you start using your project yarn by the time you get to your project yarn that first row of a project yarn is going to be nice and even you'll be using the tensioner and all of the stitches will be similar tension similar size and that row after you've discarded the waste yarn will be much more even and smoother so that's why I prefer to use waste yarn, even if I don't specifically need to have waste yarn. There's a specific reason for using waste yarn for this particular project, but that's not always the case. But I do still like to use waste yarn because it gives a much nice, smoother, even first row. So I'm just going to do a few rows of waste yarn here. Nothing interesting to see here, nothing unusual. Just going to whip this through the machine fairly quickly. So here I am back at the first black needle and I'm going to now put the project yarn in there. And as I mentioned before, this is a hybrid project. So I'm doing a single layer beanie. Usually I make my beanies uh, double, double, double layered. So I do double the number of rows I need and then fold them inside each other to make a double layered beanie. Sometimes make them reversible with different colours on each side, sometimes they're just plain. But this time I'm going to do a double brim, but the rest of the beanie is not going to be doubled. And that's why I have done this, I've needed to do this row of waist yarn so I can easily identify my first row of stitches. Because after I've done 40 rows, I'm going to put that first row back onto the needles to form the double brim. Now the main part of the, so that's going to be in this tan, tan kind of colour. And then the main part of the beanie is going to be in this really lovely tweedy kind of yarn which I've kind of fallen in love with really and goes really nicely with the tan, goes really nicely with a dark brown, goes nice with a dark blue and a green, goes with all kinds of colours which is really fabulous. Now the main part of the beanie I'm not going to do as plain knitting, the, the head part of the beanie I'm going to do in the waffle stitch. I will put down below the name of the people whose videos I have watched to form this combined project. So there's one particular lady's video, thank you very much, who I have referenced for the double brim. However, that video is just a plain top part of the beanie. And then another lady shows the waffle stitch, but I don't believe her beanie had the double brim. So this is a kind of a composite project based on the videos of two different people. And I must say the circular knitting machine community is such a fantastic fantastic sharing kind community everybody shares their knowledge and their uh, experiences really generously so thank you very much to everybody who is doing that already it certainly makes it much easier for those of us who are I consider myself still still quite new I only got my very first machine about five or six months ago so I'm not terribly experienced yet to my mind um, but yes it's only because people share their experiences and share their knowledge that the rest of us can do things and play and try experiments like the one I'm going to try today. So yeah, so here I go, I'm going to put my main project yarn into the machine now and I'm going to do 40 rows and doubled over that will be a 20 row double brim. 
You also see here, this is a center pool cake that I have made using my Jumbo Yarn Winder. So if you're interested in yarn winders, I have a recommendation of the one that I purchased. It has extra gears than most of the ones that you see on Facebook, which means you get to wind your yarn much, much faster than usual. So highly recommend that. I'll put a card up above. Don't need a particularly long tail for this, but I will give myself a little bit of room just in case, because you never know what's going to happen. Always make sure when you change colours that you hold these two yarns reasonably tightly. Just put a little bit of tension on them until both of, until both of these needles go down and capture the yarn underneath them. So keep holding on to them until... So this needle has now popped down and it's got the brown yarn underneath it. Now I'm going to reset my counter and I'm going to do 40 rows. And here we are back at the black needle and I have done 40 rows. So the next step is going to involve putting this very first row of stitches. Okay, so here we are looking at this first row of stitches which are being made much more visible and easy to identify because I've used this waste yarn. So the pink is waste yarn and the tan color is the project yarn. But you can see here very easily, here is a stitch. Here is the next stitch, here is the third stitch, and the fourth stitch. So you can see that's making it really easy. I'm not going to get mixed up and picked up, pick up a stitch in the second row instead of the first row by mistake because they're very easily identified right here. So I'll just zoom out again and show you, but here is the first stitch. I'm now going to put this back on the black needle, the first needle, and this is how we are forming a double brim. So here you can see that first black needle and here on this loom hook. Now I don't know about you, but my machine did not come with a loom hook. So I purchased myself a loom hook. You could use a small crochet hook instead, most likely. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this stitch, this stitch from the very first row onto the black needle and then knit the two stitches together. So I'll do that by placing this loop over the black needle and then cranking my handle and making sure that the yarn is captured as it normally would be under that needle. Now in the meantime, here is needle number two popping up. Make sure this stitch stays on there. It's a bit tricky, but you can get, you can do it. Now here's my second stitch. I'm going to place that on there. I'm going to kind of watch what you're doing because you can easily pop things off from where they're meant to be inadvertently if you're not watching what's going on. So I've got this stitch over here that needs to be around the red pegs and is not around the red pegs. So just this is where your loom hook is really handy. A fine crochet hook would do just as well. Uh, a knitting needle won't really because you can't um, grab onto the, grab hold of the yarn. So I'm just struggling a little to get this back over the red teeth. Okay, so I've got two stitches on the red, red teeth and I've got two stitches on the red teeth here. I'm just making sure this yarn, this yarn from the feeder gets trapped under this needle as I turn the handle so that those stitches are getting knitted together. Same thing for here, so onto my next stitch. So that was that stitch, this is the next stitch. While I'm putting this stitch on, I've got to kind of watch what's happening here. And I might stick the next one on at the same time. And do a couple of these together. So just making sure this is knitting. Yes, it is slow going, but all good things come to those who wait. All right, so we've got that stitch on, now we're on to this stitch, which needs to come onto this needle. It will get tighter the further around you go, uh, but that's all right, you can do it. So, 
Just keep your eye on where things are and that everything's going where it's meant to go. You know, make sure these stitches are down here over the rib teeth and that it's going in properly. Now I need to have an extra stitch on here so I'm just going to back up a tiny little bit because we need to have a stitch on there. It's not there yet. So let's get this stitch and then we'll do the next one as well. So I've got stitches up to here and go around and make sure these are getting knitted together all good and I'm just going to keep going around doing exactly that I'm sure you don't need me need to watch me do that 46 times I'm sure you've got the gist of it by now what I found really useful is if you make sure that this uh, this part of the fabric that is getting created is pushed down underneath this ridge that seems to really help with um, making sure that the stitches are exactly where they want because when you first lift up the needle the stitch onto the needle like I did just then you can see that the fabric it is sitting on top of this notch now after I've moved around a little bit and you can see that this stitch I'm not sure if you can see but that stitch is right near the top of the needle and I need it to be down near the bottom so that it gets knitted together and I find that if I move this down under that notch it automatically makes that stitch drop down so if you're going to do this, I highly recommend that as you go past each stitch, past the yarn feeder, that you make the fabric drop down under this notch and that will help you make sure that your stitch is in the right spot. So once again, see this fabric, I just put that stitch onto that needle and this fabric is sitting on top of that red notch, whereas here this fabric is underneath that red notch. So after I have past the yarn underneath this needle I'm going to pop this fabric down underneath this red notch and see how that has automatically dropped that stitch down there so everything's in the right place at the same time I'll put that next one on drop the fabric down put the next stitch on it becomes quite a rhythm and uh, and it's not that tricky actually once you once you work out what you need to do and that you are watching everything's happening in the way that it should do it, uh, it really does become just a, a bit of a process that you've worked out. It just becomes a bit of a rhythm that you get into really. I'm, I'm not finding this uh, particularly difficult. Yes, it's a little tedious, but this is still so much easier than doing it by hand, you know, hand knitting with needles, for me anyway. And if you're an expert knitter, it will probably be quicker for you to do this on knitting needles, but that's not me. So for me, this is this is quicker than doing this with knitting needles. So even though it's taking me a little while, this is still faster for me than doing it on knitting needles. So yay for the knitting machines. Okay, almost at the end. Sometimes the last stitch in particular can be a bit tricky to find. So this is it just here. Oops. Pretty sure. Oh, is that it there? No, it's either that or that, and I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it's this. So we'll go with that. It's feeling tight, but I, I do expect the last stitch to be tight. And when I get round to the next row, I'll be able to work out whether I have actually dropped a stitch or whether that was the right stitch. And here you can see that this beautiful double brim has been formed. So I'm going to do one more row. So at the moment all I've done is I've put that first row of stitches back up onto the needles and knitted them in. I'm going to do one more row of this colour just to kind of finalise that row or finalise the attaching of the brim. Now I've completed that row, I'm going to switch to the other yarn, which as I mentioned before is this really lovely tweed kind of finished yarn. It's just an eight ply four seasons, works really well in the machine. 
this tan colour is also a ply, uh, also for Four Seasons Marvel. So I'll just go off a bit of a tail of the brown, put that into the middle, grab my yarn of the new colour, give myself a bit of a tail, put that into the feeder at the same point and I'll show you when I come back around how to do the jogless colour change. Usually when you do a colour change in these machines, because it's circular knitting, the colour change is really obvious. Uh, there's a step up where you change colours. But this jogless knitting method or jogless colour change method means that the colours don't have that kind of step up between the rows. So I'm just going to do one row and I need to take note when we get back to this point where these colours are joining. And this time, because this is my, these are both main yarns, one of these is not waste yarn, I'm going to, now that both of these needles have popped down underneath capturing the yarn, I'm going to tie a little, little knot, otherwise I will end up with a hole. I'm just doing that a bit loose. I will finish that off, tie that more tightly once I've taken the whole project off the machine. So now I'm just going to go around once and I'll show you how to do the jogless colour change when we get back to the black needle. So here is our black needle. I've gone a little bit too far. And what I want to do is, so this still has a brown stitch because it's the first, it's the colour change. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that brown stitch. Usually it would slip over the back of the needle, would get lifted up and pushed down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it stays here at the front on the red pegs so that we get the white and the brown both together and that will give me the jogless colour change. Now what I'm going to do now is waffle stitch. This is from a lovely lady called Crazy Cat. So I'll put links to her channel in the description below so do go and check that out down below. And she has quite a few different stitches on her YouTube channel, different stitches that you can do on these circular knitting machines. So highly recommend that you go and have a look at her channel and see what's going on there. This is just one of them. The waffle stitch is one of her stitches. She's got another one called trailing ivy that looks really pretty and a couple of other ones. I'll do one more row of white and then I'll start the waffle stitch pattern. Here we are at the first black needle again and this is where we are going to start the waffle stitch. So this is about wrapping the needle and you may want to go and check out her channel rather than mine because she's the expert not me. I'm just kind of combining the double brim um, pattern and I'm adding that to, amalgamating it with Crazy Kaz's waffle stitch. So the waffle stitch as she explains it is a six row repeating pattern and it's about wrapping needles. So yarn out of the yarn holder. I'll just zoom in a bit again. So yarn out of the yarn holder, but make sure it is getting caught by this last stitch. You don't want to have a drop stitch there. And then what you're going to do is going to wrap two needles at the same time. So when these two needles are up, you just wrap around them. them to go through and then wrap the next two needles. Make sure that you've got this uh, your yarn feeder here closed because otherwise needles will hit this and potentially you can break your needles. So if this is open and the needle's coming up here this needle could get broken off so make sure you have this closed whenever you are cranking the handle on your machine or moving your machine around. So I've wrapped these two needles now I'm going to wrap the next two needles. One, two, Oops, one, two, and just do that, miss that needle. One, two, one, two, and just do this, oops, all the way around this row. So I'm wrapping two needles at the same time. Oh, missed that 
one again. Now be careful when you're going backwards. I'm not sure if you see what happens there. See this stitch is here on the two red teeth. This stitch, because I went backwards, got lifted off. So I just need to bring this back under to make sure it's on there. Because I went backwards, 